In this tutorial, we'll explain how to use the Darwin Backtesting tool. The Darwin Backtesting tool is useful when searching for investment strategies because it enables investors to know the aggregated past evolution of a portfolio of Darwins. Another use of the backtest consists of comparing the performance of a real investment portfolio with that of the same portfolio in the past. The more future curves resemble past ones, the more robust the portfolio. Past curves can also orient us as to where to define stop losses and take profits on the portfolio level. Let's see how to generate a backtest step by step. Get started by first setting the starting date of the simulation. Set the capital invested in the portfolio. Select your desired leverage. Then select the Darwins you'd like to add to the portfolio. You can add Darwins by using the search feature or by selecting them from a list. The lists available are those of all Darwins, the default filters, your custom filters and that of the Darwins you currently have in your real portfolio. Once you've added the Darwins, you'll see that their weight in the portfolio gets distributed evenly. You'll also notice that after adding the Darwins, the backtest gets instantly calculated and visualized. Now let's see how to analyze the backtest. The backtest result is divided into a section with the totals and a section with charts. In the row of totals, you can check out the return, the PNL in your wallet currency, the performance fees paid to the traders, and your final equity, which is the sum of your invested capital, your PNL, and the paid performance fees. The chart section offers various types of visuals. By default, the chart will show return percentages in a line graph. The red line represents the evolution of the backtest's total, while the other lines show evolution of return of the individual Darwins that compose the portfolio. By placing the mouse over the chart, you'll see additional data, exact returns of the backtest and individual Darwins with the highest returns. You can also zoom into the chart at any point you wish to. If you choose to visualize the backtest as an area chart, you keep seeing the red line with the backtest's total return, surrounded by a grey area, representing the oscillation of the returns of individual Darwins in the portfolio. Finally, you can choose to see evolution of PNL and performance phase. You'll be able to see evolution of the PNL of the portfolio, of trades and that of performance fees paid to the traders. PNL of the portfolio is the result of PNL of trades minus performance fees paid to traders. A backtest final accumulated curves include investor divergence and performance fees paid to the underlying trader. It's thus normal that backtest results don't correspond exactly with the constituent Darwin's returns. It's because of this characteristic that it's useful to run a backtest even with a sole Darwin. While the Darwin's curve on the Darwin's page shows notional return without divergence and without performance phase, the backtest will show actual return including investor divergence and net of performance phase. Don't forget to share your backtest. The backtesting tool has a sharing feature, providing you with a URL that will show the backtest to people loading the URL in the same way as you can see it. If you prefer, you're welcome to share the backtest directly on Twitter, LinkedIn or Facebook. How do you use the backtesting tool? We are keen to receive your feedback in the comments section on the DarwinX community forum or at info at 
And remember, DarwinX is a technology platform and an exchange, not an investment advisor. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results.